What's going on everybody? This is Coach G uh, back with another GIMP tutorial here and what I want to look at today is layer masks, how to apply them and what you could use them for potentially. If you look on screen, I have two layers open. I have a pumpkin layer up top. As you see, I have my visibility icon up. And if I disable that, I have a black and white version of that photo underneath it. Now, again, clicking that I reveals what I have at the top layer, which is a colored version of the pumpkin. If I want to apply a layer mask to this specific image, I will right click that layer, making sure that it's selected, and there is the add layer mask option for us. I will click it and you will see a dialog box pop up. If you're looking here on screen, we have white, which has full opacity in parentheses, and we have black, which has full transparency in parentheses. I want us to go ahead and select this white option. We're gonna ignore everything else here. Uh, we're just gonna look at the white full opacity option and click add. Once you see that happen, you will notice a little white box. This is our layer mask essentially, and white reveals. That's what we wanna remember. White reveals, black conceals. So white is revealing everything right here, which is initially what we had, the color image of this pumpkin. Now, if I have this selected. You can't really see it right now, but there is a white box around it. If I select the pumpkin image, you see the white box around here. So it's very important to remember what is selected. So when you go to apply a non-destructive edit, which would be a nice mask we're about to make, you are painting on the correct object or layer. Um, so when I go to my paintbrush tool, by either pressing the keyboard shortcut P or finding it in my toolbox over here, I will also notice that white is selected as my active foreground color. I want to go ahead and switch that to black. And so I will reset my colors and by clicking this little box right here, and we have black as my active foreground color now. What you want to remember, like I said, is black is going to conceal. Black will hide what is on screen here. It's almost acting as an eraser, but it is non-destructive. So if I paint, you can see the black and white coming through, which is the layer underneath. And again, I'm painting, I'm making sure this layer mask is selected. I released it and I can see that the black paint has been applied on the mask, but obviously there's no black paint on here. What the black paint does in effect is, you know, kind of mask this image where I am painting on. Okay, so let's say that my goal was to have everything except for this log or whatever this thing is and this pumpkin be in black and white. So I would obviously need to spend some time masking this image. And this paintbrush that is selected right here has a kind of a fuzzy edge. It's not a full on um, you know, rough edge just like this one that I've switched to. So notice the difference in uh, the effect right here. It's a very crisp, hard edge, right? And if I go back to this fuzzy mask, the it's it's that's a little hard to tell, but it is less of an abrupt edge, if you want to call it that. So. Um, another thing I want you to understand is that this paintbrush size, obviously you can go to this brush size here and slide it how you see fit. But if you want to use a keyboard shortcut, uh, this might be a little bit more efficient and effective for you. So if you look where the P key is on your keyboard, there are left and right brackets to the right of that P key. On the keyboard so left is going to minimize and I'm holding left right now and it's minimizing the brush size so you can see a much smaller brush if I hold the right or click on the right bracket it's going to increase the brush size allowing more coverage when I go to paint obviously 
if I'm only going to be painting um, these, basically everything outside the pumpkin in this log, some of the stuff over here I can afford to increase my brush size dramatically just to speed up the process instead of having a small brush about the size of a penny or a dime. This is a huge brush now. And again, if I want to go quicker, I can go, I, there's no problem going over here and just increasing it quite a bit. And here we are. Now you see more coverage is being taken care of by that. I can go back here and just slide it, um, you know, as I see fit and continue working and continue painting this until I get close enough to the object where I know I might start accidentally um, erasing more than I want or masking more than I want, I should say. So what I mean is I'm going to need to zoom in. Let's say I'm, I'm masking away, right? And I accidentally go like this. Obviously, you can press Control Z. But um, if I switch back to my white paintbrush, uh, color, I can paint back over that and obtain that. This is part of being a uh, non-destructive image editing tool because if I were to close this application, I'd be able to open it back up. And if I wanted to uh, make this gray or black and white, I should say, uh, that would be no problem. I would simply just adjust my mask uh, painting surface. Um, now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is speed this up and once I return this should be very you know tightly concealed with my mask I'm, what you're gonna notice is I'm gonna be zooming in and as you can see um, you have many tools up here but this zoom tool if you just want to press the Z button you'll get access to it um, there's a plus sign right here that signifies that I'm zooming in the Minus sign would signify, you see the little minus sign um, on my cursor, that would signify that I'm zooming out, plus is zooming in, minus zooming out. Um, so those are just some things to remember. I'm going to zoom in. Oh, that's a little bit much, so I'm going to zoom back out too. And, you know, right about there is fine. I'm going to speed up this process by taking a break from talking and I will get back with you and discuss what has happened in just a moment. Alright, we're back here and the mask has been fully applied. I went ahead and sped things up just for time's sake and for demonstration purposes I got a pretty decent mask around this pumpkin and the log. You don't see too many artifacts but I'm sure if I zoomed in there would be some um, stuff that we could clean up but for demonstration purposes like I said this is a pretty decent job. Uh, easy mask to apply because um, there was not a whole lot. There's no like no hair. There's uh, no 
you know, leaves or anything that we were getting out. It was a pretty, you know, decent shape we were working with. So painting over that was no problem at all. Um, what you want to remember is there are additional tools you can use, such as this free select tool, which is what I was using. And I was clicking points right there to speed things up and bringing back the point right there to where it lightens up as yellow to make my selection bring up the marching ants, which are that right there. And I was using my paint tool to paint inside of that. But, you know, that's just uh, one of the quick tricks you can do if you don't want to just sit here all day long and paint along the edge. But either way it works as long as you have uh, patience, time, and you are careful with what you're doing. Always remember, white reveals, black conceals. That is our training for today. Thanks for watching. Always, if you enjoy the video, click like and subscribe. Peace out.